Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look real quick on how to team build a team in Pokemon Go for the Go Battle League. As I already made a video about this like one and a half years ago, but this was a 30 minute long video. And just before we get the new season, which is going to be again with um, MMR or ELO, I kind of wanted to take a look real quick on how you're going to be able to build a team for all of those people who are going to start now new into the season after we're having the interlude season where most likely some people just started with Go Battle League. And we're going to take a look on how to build a team here with PV Poke. PV Poke is the main website which you're gonna want to use to build your teams. Um, there are several things that you have here when you go into PV Poke. Like you usually start into this main tab here, which has like the different options of battle train rankings, um, team builder, and contribute. Contribute is not really that important for you. Um, but yeah, like all of them are kind of interesting. Train you can train your Pokemon like yourself for like if you have a team which you want to train against like a CPU or Pokemon you can do it there. I'm not going to take a look at this, to be honest. I did this when I was starting Go Battle League, like back in the day, but haven't really took a look at this for ages anymore. Um, the first thing is, if you just don't have the time and you want just good teams, of course, you can look on my channel. But also, you can just go to PvPoke, go to Top Performers. You can change the league here. Whatever is currently available is usually there. And you see here the top performing Pokemon for this league, which is not completely always accurate. Like, take this, like, kind of with, like, I don't it's not really completely accurate. It's just like those Pokemon that are currently on paper have good matchups and are kind of okay. But it's not, it's not direct. Like there can be other Pokemon that are really good. There can be Pokemon here that are really bad. Um, but like it, it should give you a general idea on which Pokemon are good. And below you see like there's some top teams which you can try out if you like them. I'm not the biggest fan of all of them. I think prior, like a few years prior, like the quality of the teams are were a little bit better. No, it's basically just meta Pokemon mixed together without always an idea. For example, here the Arteria Toxic Rocket, uh, Toxic Rock team. There you have two Pokemon that are really weak to like Cherry or Fairy type users, and then you have like the Rice Steel in the back, which is the only option, but it doesn't really make too much sense to be honest. So like I'm not the biggest fan of those teams anymore to be honest, but still there are gonna be some teams in there that work out well for you. But the main thing that you're going to do usually is look at the rankings and in the rankings you're going to be able to see like the best Pokemon for each league. Here again you can change the league whatever you want to play in and again those rankings are also not completely perfect. Some Pokemon are going to be better, some Pokemon are going to be weaker depending on like really the meta that you see. Also the meta depending on which elo range you are going to be different so like you kind of maybe have to adapt your team depending on what you see when you play Go Battle League. Yeah, like here you see, but in general, still the Pokemon that are looking to be the best, for example, the, the Marowak, which just got introduced, which is kind of cool, or the Araquanid, which just got introduced, which we're going to take a look as well. Here, if you click on the Pokemon, you're going to see the key wins and the key losses. So those Pokemon, your team should be able to handle with the Mandibus, the Nidoqueen, the Ninetales, the Sunfish, those are the main meta Pokemon that they kind of lose against. And those Pokemon here in the back are the Pokemon that are really good for the Araquanid phase, because, for example, against Swampert and Warring usually resist most of the moves, which is kind of cool, and you can hit back pretty easily with the back bus. But yeah, this is basically this tool. You have still the different options here for different types of Pokemon that you're looking for. For example, good leads would be then the Alone Merrick, which just got released, the Stunfist, the Mage and whatever. It's not 100% accurate. Those are all good leads, to be honest. Like they're, they are all really fine as a lead. But like, for example, the safe swaps, um, there are some Pokemon in there that I wouldn't really count as good safe swaps. For example, Zangus, just because you don't really have the bulk. And like you should still kind of take it a little bit, yeah. Like it, it's not always completely perfect here, but it's it gives you a general idea which you can use in there, like different kind of options there. But of course, the main part here is going to be the team building. And for the team building, you can just basically think about one Pokemon that you want to run. For example, for me right now, the Arachnid. Arachnid is a cool Pokemon that. Um, just got introduced, has a lot of play now in the meta. So let's build a team around that. First off, you should ask yourself where do you want to play it? Where you want to play it kind of depends on how the matchups are. If you go, for example, to the battle tab where you can calculate, like in general, more in depth analysis on how this Pokemon performs against the other Pokemon, especially in the Matrix mode. Matrix mode is also really awesome to see which IV spreads are the best. You can go here, put the Aragonite in there, and you can calculate really fast in the one to one shield scenario how good it is in the meta and you see like a lot of matchups where you win but you 
also see some matchups that are really, really horrible. For example, if I can see some, there should be one at the R. Where is Altaria, for example, is a really horrible one. But also Mandibus, you can really win. Like you see, if it's 500, it's a draw. If it's over 500, like 650 or whatever, you easily win this. If it's below 500, you lose this. So it's basically what you can think of. But here's like the main issues. You see it, Stunfisk, also the Glaring Stunfisk not, is not the best, but Stunfisk, Skarmory, Registeel, all of them completely hard wall this. Pelopa as well, like you have like a lot of Pokemon that really hard wall this. So if you have Pokemon like this, that are a lot of times in the back of your opponent's team, you don't really want to run this Pokemon as a safe swap because then you have the risk of you basically swapping into your Pokemon if you lose your lead and getting hard walled immediately again. So safe swap Pokemon that you want to have there are usually Pokemon that generate energy very fast, have good coverage and do some nice damage with the charge moves as well while not having a lot of weaknesses. One Pokemon that always is very good for this would be the Sableye. Sableye, especially the X XL version, you can also run a Hundo theoretically, which a lot of people run back in the day. You see, you beat basically everything else here um, that you would have lost to before with the, with the Eraquanet. And um, you're going to be able to also put this now in the team building tool and see how this all performs in a more simplistic way. And you're gonna see like it, it's it's pretty decent. You see still Licky Tongue gonna be a problem, Bastion is still gonna be a problem for those. So you still have two Pokemon that you really don't really want to face here, to be honest. Even though Needle Queen is okay. And um now you kinda want to get Pokemon that destroy both of those. Like uh, you, you see here the X is what you win, the um Circles are what you lose, and the circles which uh, you see against Rachi Steel, they are the, the matchups that you really hardly lose. So you have a lot of matchups here still that you lose with both Pokemon. So you need a Pokemon that basically beats those. And if you scroll down here on PU Poke, you're gonna be able to find the potential threats, like those Pokemon completely destroy your team still, like you don't really want to face them with your team because like they are good against you. So you want to have something that beats them. And you also get the potential alternatives here. And you see already some Pokemon that are really good for this. And the main thing would be here, of course, the first one, Galarian Stunfisk, which basically completes this team perfectly, as you're gonna see here. Um, you basically win against everything else. Digger Speed can be a little bit of a problem, but Digger Speed is not really common in the meta. So you see, basically, Stunfisk beats everything that like those two cannot beat, which is a perfect core then. But um, now you think, okay, do I want to have the uh, which like in which order do I want to have this? Of course, Sableye, Safe Swap. If you lose the lead, you want to switch in the Sableye. But do you want to have the Stunfisk or the Requinite in the lead now? And this is pretty simple here because you see already how this turns out. You have the Stunfisk, it's the only Pokemon that beats the Reggie Steel, while Sableye still have an okay matchup against it because Sableye is an okay matchup against everything, but the Requinite doesn't. So you kind of want to beat the Galarian Stunfisk in this kind of team because you're going to be able to beat those Pokemon that the other two together cannot beat. So, like, those, like, you kind of want to have always the hard answer for those Pokemon that the backline is struggling in the lead, and then if you don't win the lead, you want to swap out and just say swap to bait out the Pokemon that you cannot really deal with with your Recronet, for example, here in the back, which the Saber really, really nicely does. And this team is something I played recently, which was completely amazing. Definitely highly recommend you this team as well. Uh, this is how you build it. But if you want to really like have like a team building there, which is a little bit different, like in general, like if you go here, for example, and you see um, like those Pokemon, uh, that you don't beat here, like you, you, you really only care about some of them because they're not always all, all in the meta here. If you consider this one, um, they put stuff in there, for example, right, Bastion, and I don't know when the last time I saw Bastion or Regirock, like they consider Pokemon that you don't really need to consider because they're not really present in the meta. So if you don't want to consider them, I think you could potentially also exclude them here and for potential threats. If you hear you exclude threats, you could do this. What I usually do to team build here here is I just go into a new team builder um, and I'm just gonna put in the Pokemon that I'm losing to. For example, here Reggie Steel, the Lickitung. Um, what else do we really lose to, which is common? Altaria, for example. And you can do this with like up to six Pokemon in this case. And you can go and write this team as well. 
And what you're gonna see here now, you have now a completely random team um, based on the counties to the Pokemon you have prior here. But what Poke does know is go exactly for the Pokemon um, that would help beat those teams. Here, for example, the potential threats of this is then again Reggie Steel and Sunfist, what you saw already prior, but also some other ones that might be even better for you, depending on like the rest of your team. Like you can put up to six in here and you get like some better counters than what you see here because you can choose which Pokemon you are supposed to counter. Because, for example, like Bastard and Regirock are not really common in the meta right now. Same with Wigglytuff. So you can, like, if you have like more Pokemon, for example, Nido Queen, I should have put in there as well then the Stunfish would have been even higher. Like if you have like those Pokemon that you really, really want to um, beat with this, you're gonna be able to do this way easier if you just make another team just with the Pokemon that counter your two Pokemon prior and get the potential threats for those Pokemon as this is way more accurate and gives you a better matchup. But yeah, this is basically how you build teams in a little bit more than 10 minutes and Pokemon Go PvP. Of course, PvP, best website for this. It's pretty, pretty simple. You should be able to get a good team with whatever you want to do with this technique. And otherwise, if you are short on time, just go to top performers and see what you have there. And if you have two Pokemon with different IVs and you wonder which one is better of them, you can just go here onto the matrix mode as well. You're gonna be able to put the Great League meta in here. And you're gonna put here, for example, an Arachronid with the perfect IVs and one Arachronid with, for example, 10 attack. Where is the difference? We can take a look at this here. And we wanna see, for example, also at the end, that we lose two matchups because of our um, missing bulk from the attack. And you see also break points on bulk points here, which means that your quick move does one more attack or the bulk points that the opponent's quick move does one more or less attack. Depending on your IV spread, for example, here, yeah, the Mandibus does more damage with the Air Slash against an Arachronet with 10 AM attack than with a zero attack. So this was just a small um, team building review because the last one was 30 minutes. I think 12 minutes is a little bit more fitting. Hope you enjoy this kind of content. I have to pre-produce because I'm in Bremen and doing the um, qualifier there right now, most likely when you see it. So thanks for watching. See you next video. Have a great rest of your day and bye.